your, your Excellency, General Yoweri Museveni Kaguta, Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda, and uh, the distinguished guests. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure to be here again um, to discuss matters of <coughs> national importance and uh, matters of importance to the sovereignty of Africa. This time, our concern is WHO. Uh, WHO has been the cornerstone of the uh, advisories on medical care uh, in Africa for a long time. And WHO has done many good things for us. Uh, but WHO is also doing some very bad things that I would like to bring to your attention. There is uh, an international health regulation of WHO that is what WHO uses to guide in the management of pandemics. And there is a proposal to amend that document, Your Excellency. And the amendments so proposed are going to convert WHO, which is um, an advisory body uh, from, uh, uh, that is run by bureaucrats who are not elected into an administrative authority that will have power to usurp the sovereignty of um, member states in a case the director of uh, the director general simply says that there is a pandemic now the negotiations for those for that international health regulations plus a, a new pandemic treaty are currently going on and uh, there will be a meeting uh, this May, uh, this month, actually we are in. And the nego negotiations have been headed by the Ministry of Health technocrats, Ministers of Health, Ministers of Foreign Affairs and Ambassadors. And I'm not sure that they are briefing the executive and the parliaments in the different countries. Yet they are negotiating uh, things that can destroy the sovereignty of Africa. We cannot afford to trust WHO anymore, Your Excellency. And I'll just mention a few things that have caused great concern to us. In 2014, 2015, WHO brought um, tetanus eradication campaign in our country. It was a campaign to um, eradicate neonatal tetanus, babies who are born who eventually get tetanus. And um, the vaccine that was used is a different type of a tetanus vaccine that is a fertility regulating vaccine, where they take tetanus and combine it with a hormone called human chorionic gonadotropin that supports pregnancy. And when you inject a woman with that vaccine, she produces antibodies against that hormone and therefore is rendered sterile. So we are noticing an increase in the number of uh, infertility cases among young couples who you examine and they are normal but cannot get children, or couples who are losing three, four, five pregnancies uh, before they can carry any pregnancy to term. We were able to expose this, and uh, we have even published a paper that is available. And, um, Fortunately, in 2017, WHO said Kenya is now free of neonatal tetanus and they left our country. But they developed this vaccine over a 20-year period of research from 1972 to 1992. And they used that vaccine in South America. And it is possible it has been used in many other African countries. The second reason we cannot trust WHO, Your Excellency, is malaria. UK was able to eradicate malaria in 1921. The US was able to eradicate malaria in 1951. And from 1955, WHO has been working on how Africa can eradicate malaria. And up to today, we still haven't uh, been able to eradicate malaria. And now they have proposed GMO mosquitoes. Uh, it is, seems like it's not enough to own seed that is going to be used to make our people poor. 
because of GMO seed. Now they are making GMO, they are proposing GMO mosquitoes that apparently will sterilize the natural ones. Now we do not know the extent of damage that that kind of activity would take. But worst of all is that they are proposing vaccination of our children against malaria. Yet malaria is a treatable disease. In fact, the hub that is being used, uh, the, the trees that are being used to create uh, quinine, which is one of the best medicines, especially where there is resistance, the trees are grown here in Congo. Artemisia afra, Artemisia anua, is a hub that treats uh, malaria just from drinking the tea of the hub. These things are available to us. And with concerted effort, Africa can eradicate malaria without the help of WHO. Now, one, one of our uh, doctors in Congo wrote a paper that demonstrated how well the Artemisia tea worked and compared it to conventional medicine and even demonstrated it works better than conventional medicine. And two years later, his paper was pulled out. It was retracted. We do not need a vaccine for our children to treat for, for malaria. Then Your Excellency, WHO also proposes the use of the HPV vaccine to prevent cancer of the cervix amongst our children. We are supposed to inject our girls from the age of 10 with a vaccine called human papilloma uh, uh, HPV vaccine. Now, that vaccine is being said to be a vaccine for preventing cancer of the cervix. Your Excellency, that vaccine is for a sexually transmitted disease called human papilloma virus disease. It is, it is not for cancer. Now, any virgin, whether male or female, is not at risk of getting HPV. And it is only on the first sexual experience that there is a risk that one could get this disease. And if a woman got, pre got this disease and got sick with HPV, over 90% of them, their natural immunity destroy the virus and she doesn't need any treatment from anyone. A small group of 1 to 10% will develop persistent disease. And this persistent disease undetected for 15 to 20 years is the only time it would give them a risk of cancer. And Europe and America were able to reduce deaths from cancer of the cervix to negligible levels by only popularizing a test called the, the pap smear test. Among any woman who has ever experienced sexual intercourse, one test done every three years. Your Excellency, WHO has always been an advisory organization. What Dr. Wahome is saying, the new international health regulations that they are pushing will make the decisions by WHO binding to all nations, and that is what we must resist. So if they decided that Uganda needs to have this vaccine, then it will ensure that the vaccine is actually given to all the people, because that is their decision. And those are the health regulations that we are saying should not be passed by the health ministers. Now, Dr. Wahome. Dr. Wahome, maintenant has now rang the alarm bell. Vient de sonner la cloche. I have been proud of promoting 13 vaccines. Je promouvais avec fierté 13 vaccins. In Uganda, oh, you, you, you go and be vaccinated, 13 of them. En Uganda, Lisa, vaccinez-vous, 13 vaccins. Including the one he, she's talk, he's talking about, the one of uh, anti and cervix cancer. Y compris à le vaccin qu'il a évoqué contre le papillomavirus. So I thank you so much. I want to read that paper. Je vous remercie. J'aimerais lire votre document. The, the, so, so you are now coming up to fight your wars because for us we fought ours. We are, we are now in the, the back in the background of supporting you. Now you take the lead and fight these wars. Vous commencez à mener vos combats. Nous avons amené les nôtres et nous vous soutenons aujourd'hui. And I thank you for immunizing me against the WHO. Et je vous remercie de m'avoir vacciné contre l'OMS. Because now you have given me a vaccine. 
vous venez de me vacciner contre l'OMS. Donc faire attention quand je traite avec l'OMS.